Welcome to worship here at Auburn First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat and today is Sunday, July 24th, 2022. And we're so glad you've joined us today. Auburn First United Methodist Church is an affirming Christian church where all are welcome and all are invited into full participation in the life of this church community. Let's continue now with the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. The goodness of God has called us here. We are recipients of God's gracious love. In times of darkness, God abides in us. In the light, God dances and shouts with us. Holy is God who is present with us at all times. How grateful we are for God's presence and compassion. Amen. And now I invite you to bow with me for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you are our generous parent, our patient teacher, our constant friend. We live by the hope of your promises and we seek to follow your way. We thank you for the gift of your spirit by whose power we breathe and move and pray. And all this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. circumstances for the better. You've forgiven your people's wrongdoing. You've covered all their sins. You've stopped being furious. You've turned away from your burning anger. You, the God who can save us, restore us. Stop being angry with us. Will you be mad with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from one generation to the next? Won't you bring us back to life again so that your people can rejoice in you? Show us your faithful love, Lord. Give us your salvation. Let me hear what Lord, Lord God says, because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him so that his glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. 
Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for his steps. Scripture reading is from Luke 11, 1 through 13, 13, New Revised Standard Version. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name, bring in your kingdom, Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who has wronged us and don't lead us into temptation. He also said to them, imagine that one of you has a friend and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, friend, loan me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, 
Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is open. Which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asks for a fish? If a child asks for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's continue now with our Sunday message. During a faith-based conference that I attended some years ago, we occasionally broke into small groups for discussions. In my group, there was a woman who quietly shared that she had been told all of her life how important it is to pray, to go to God in prayer and ask for what we need. For much of her life, she had a good, strong prayer life. Then one day she learned that her infant daughter had a rare and usually fatal disease. So she prayed that God would heal her daughter. Throughout each day, she prayed, and the members of her church often prayed with her. Her daughter's name was placed on prayer chains all across the country. Then the woman began to sob as she shared that her infant daughter had quickly passed away. She wondered, why didn't God answer her prayers? Why did her innocent child have to endure that illness? And how could she continue to believe in a God who would allow such an awful thing to happen? The members of her group tried to comfort and console her. We told her that God would never want her daughter or her to suffer. And God loved her. God was right there to care for her all throughout her time of grief. Yet these words of encouragement did not seem to make any difference at that time. I'm sure we've all had the experience of praying for something and then our prayer was not answered in the way that we hoped. So perhaps we struggle as we study our text today from the Gospel of Luke. What does Jesus mean when he says, ask and you will receive, knock and the door will be open to you? It is important for us to go to God often in prayer, to talk freely with God and bring the needs and concerns of our lives before God. We might think of prayer as a way of getting God's attention so that God will hear our concerns and God will give us what we ask for. Yet prayer does not convince God to act in a certain way. Prayer does not change God. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes us by bringing us into a loving relationship with God and opening us to the presence and power of God's Holy Spirit. The Spirit brings us strength and encouragement, comfort and peace. The Spirit reminds us that God provides for us. God gives us just what we need to make it through one more day. By God's spirit, we are forgiven for the mistakes we make, and God helps us to forgive others. Through prayer, we even make better decisions. We are less likely to make those decisions that bring us into temptation and get us into trouble. And by God's spirit, God is always inviting us into a transforming relationship with our loving God. A relationship in which we can be blessed in all of these ways. And then we can do our part to work with God, to bring forth the kingdom of God. A kingdom of justice and righteousness, where we love one another, just as God loves all of us. Our love for our neighbors grows deep and wide. And God's spirit guides us in working towards the end of hunger and homelessness, hatred and exclusion, violence and oppression. We are empowered to do God's work in the world. 
With God's spirit moving in our lives, we seek first the kingdom of God. We care for God's people, and we know that God will take good care of us. God's spirit is the gift we are given when we ask, seek, and knock through prayer. Prayer opens the door to a generous, loving relationship with God that moves through our lives to change us. Over time, prayer changed the woman I met at that conference some years ago. She remained in touch with many of us in her discussion group, and we continued to hold her in our prayers. Eventually, she returned to her own prayer life and the prayer practices that had long been so important to her. Then God's spirit started moving in her life. She started to see how God had helped her to survive her painful ordeal, and God's spirit began to connect her with others. Eventually, in her local church, she started up a support group created for those who struggled through the loss of a child. The people who took part in this group began to tell her just how much it meant to them to be able to talk with others who truly understood the depth of their pain, a pain unlike anything else they had ever experienced. This grieving mother would never have imagined that anything good could come from the tragedy she endured. Yet now God's spirit gave her strength and compassion to care for their children of God, who were now in the place where she had been not too long before. Through prayer, God's spirit changed her into a healing agent in God's kingdom of love. So how is God changing you in your life of prayer? Please pray with me. Oh God, we give you thanks for your never ending love for us. We thank you for your patience with us as we insist that we are just too busy to take time out for you. Help us to make our relationship with you a high priority and allow your Holy Spirit to flow through every part of our lives as you guide us in serving your people and doing our part to build your kingdom. All this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue now in prayer. If you have a prayer need today, you are welcome to send us a prayer request at this email address, office at auburnfirstumc.org. Auburn First UMC is all one word and first is spelled out. We are always honored to pray with you. At this time, I'd like to offer a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we rely on your spirit and we pray today for the people of your world. Guide us as we care for each other. Lead us in ways of peace, compassion, and justice. We pray for this earth that suffers at the hands of your people. Pour out your healing mercy on this planet you have made and show us how to be worthy stewards of its beauty and its gifts, that in honoring the earth, we may also honor you. We pray for those who suffer, including the addicted, the abused, the frail, and the sick. Soothe our suffering, Heal our wounds, calm our anxious hearts, and make us whole in you. And now we take a moment in the silence to bring you other concerns that we hold in our hearts today. Oh God, we now leave these prayers with you, trusting in your mighty power and your grace. 
And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us all how to pray when he said these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we wait for the coming of God's good sign, we answer the invitation to take part in God's work, bringing our tithes and offerings with joyful gratitude. We invite you to give electronically or mail your gift to the church. You may give online on our church website, auburnfirstumc.org, or if you're mailing your gift, our church address is listed at the top of the church website. Let us pray. Lord, you are the giver of every gift. Accept these offerings, we pray, that through them we may do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you, our sovereign and our God. Amen. And now, disciples of Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. May you have a grace-filled week, and we look forward to seeing you right back here next Sunday.